What's up? These are gonna be 10 must-know tips if you're coming to Halloween Horror Nights. Time out, you see those beautiful clear skies and right now you're thinking, Josh, you picked a beautiful day to film. Well, <laughs> in true Horror Nights fashion, that weather does not last long. Now, some of these tips are just gonna be for the first timers. Some of these tips might be refreshers for some of you who have been here before. Some of you might be veterans and going, Josh, I already knew all that stuff and to that I say, why are you even watching the video? Either way, though, we're gonna get into these 10 tips. These are things you for sure should know before you come to Halloween Heart. I'm also gonna have two bonus recommendations that I'm gonna start right out the gate for you, okay? First things first, Express Pass. If you can get it and if you have the means, I 100% recommend it. If you're doing a single night ticket. I had the Express Pass with my multi-pass last year, but it was 100% worth. With the Express Pass, you're in for a stress-free night. You can get here when you please, you can do the house as you please. And if you're coming for just one night, I cannot recommend it enough. My brother came and got the Express for just one night last year. We were able to knock out a ton of houses, all 10 to be exact, and the show. Stress-free, grabbed drinks, grabbed food, took our time. It was great. So if you have the means, you should get the Express Pass. If you can't, it's not the end of the world. Trust me, you can still do everything. Two, the second recommendation is if you're not doing the Express Pass, try and do Stay and Scream. Stay and Scream's where you come into the park before the park officially closes and they have you in these sections and they release you to the houses a little earlier before the park opens. So if you have a park day ticket for that, you can do that or you can buy an add-on. I think it's like 20 to 30 bucks to do it. If you're able to, you can do that. But again, not the end of the world. Not necessary, but if possible, I'd do it. Those are two recommendations about how to get a little advantage. If you can't do it or if you don't want to do it, not the end of the world. These 10 tips are going to be for the night of Horror Nights without those things. So if you're not getting those things, don't worry. These tips are for you. If you are getting those things, these tips will still help. All right, first things first is tip number one, and that is to come early. Halloween Horror Nights officially opens at 6.30, but you do not want to roll up to the gates at 6.30. This gate will be packed out. You want to get here around 5.15 at the latest. Getting here early, that means go to the bathroom before you get in line. That means eat dinner before you get in line, okay? The food options here are pretty unique. Exactly, everybody's cup of tea. I mean, one of the things they're offering is like baked beans and clam chowder. I don't know who wants to eat that running around the park drinking at 10 o'clock. That's, hey, if you, that's your thing, cool. It doesn't seem appetizing to me. So I like to eat before I get here full stomach so I don't have to worry about food. The park officially will open for Horror Nights at 6.30, but they open the gates typically way before that at like 6 o'clock, 6.15 at the latest. Get in the park as early as 6 o'clock and get that head start to some of those houses. So you want to get here early and you want to come here with an empty bladder but a full stomach. The second tip is to get your tickets early. Behind me is the ticketing and guest relations, and these lines will get very busy from the hours of 5 p.m. all the way through 8 o'clock because people will be trying to get tickets, get their add-ons, get their ticket situation figured out at guest relations. They get very backed up. You can easily, and I've seen it happen, people waste 45 minutes to an hour just trying to get your ticket. Do yourself a favor, buy it online, have it on the app or have the barcode in your email so you're ready to go right at 5.15. Don't waste the time trying to purchase it that day uh, because one, if it's a very busy night, it could sell out and two, you could be wasting a ton of time standing here when you could be inside getting scared. Number three, and this is an important one and I'm telling you and it's something I don't hear people talk about enough because I've made this mistake plenty of times and that is these bad boys right here wear sunglasses especially if you're coming early which you should be the sun's still going to be out for a bit till like 8 p.m 8 30 even sometimes in the beginning couple of weeks here and as you're getting into these houses early going from the sun and the eyes just like this to then going into a dark house it takes a while for your eyes to adjust and that means you could be missing things, you could be more susceptible to scares for sure, but it, sometimes it's even harder to navigate your way through these. You're kind of just following the person in front of you rather than enjoying the house. Wearing sunglasses, you're coming in, it makes that adjustment a lot easier to wear sunglasses up to the point you enter, and then once you enter, take them off especially in the back of the park, which is where you should be starting, which we'll get to in a few tips. Those are all 10 houses, so all the queues are outside. There's no real shade, so you definitely should have sunglasses on. Prepare yourself, make sure you're good, uh, because those adjustments into those houses, they get very dark, almost pitch black at certain points. So having these sunglasses are gonna make that adjustment period for your eyes in the beginning of the night very, very easy. Here's the tribute store facade this year, and um, not great. A quick interruption on tips right now because I want to pop in there because your boy, yes me, JVTV, might be in the tribute store this year. We got to take a quick look. 
<laughs> there he is, right there on the corner. What a stud. That's a good looking man if you ask me. The tribute store is really cool and we'll do a video on that soon as we get into opening night as we get into the weekend. But we're not here for that, we're here for tips. So let's get right back into it. So here are two of the many themed food booths that Universal has for Halloween Horror Nights with some cool food. This is probably going to be the most popular one of the year, the mini Stay Puft S'more. And like I said in tip number one, you should eat before. Eat a healthy dinner before. That's going to be your best move so that way you're not stopping for too much food. If there are snacks you want to try and all the menus are online, you can see all the pictures online if you look them up. Tip number four, and that's to eat the snacks early. These food lines, and I'm no joke, will be 20 to 30 minutes long, sometimes even longer on these busy nights. Uh, so if you want to get a snack and you for sure want to try it, I do it in the beginning of the night. Do close a bit earlier than uh, park close as well. So if you wait, so if you're trying to wait till later, it can be a little dicey. Sometimes you might miss it. So I definitely recommend if there is a snack you for sure want to try over a house or over a show or something like that, that much, definitely do it earlier in the night. Get to it and get it done. When the wait times are, you can walk up or it's only a couple minutes because they will get insanely long. Tip number five, look at these shoes. Do they look new to you? Well, they're not. Yep, these bad boys have been worn in. Now, why am I telling you that? Because you need shoes that are worn in. Comfortable shoes, worn in shoes, shoes you can walk around for a while. See, there's already a lot of steps walking around this park and Horror Nights expands the park even bigger. You're going backstage for all these houses, which means long lines backstage, a lot of walking, especially in the back of the park. Coming here with brand new shoes so they can look good for an Instagram photo, you just made a mistake because your feet are already gonna be hurting regardless. So with new shoes, not worn in shoes, not comfortable shoes, your feet are gonna be destroyed before the night even begins. I don't know if you know this, it rains a lot in Florida. So you wanna get shoes that you're comfortable getting wet, that is not the end of the world if they do get a little wet. These backstage areas are dirty, they're gross, it gets muddy, it gets wet. So you definitely want some worn-in shoes you don't mind getting a little dirty and that are gonna be comfortable for you to walk around. Trust me, I've made the mistake before. Time out, now I could have cut all of what you're about to see out. And that is me being a primetime awful content creator and forgetting which tip I'm even on. So let's see if I can figure this one out. All right, tip. Come on. Is this five or six? I think it's six. If you ever wanted a little behind the scenes JVTV, this is exactly it. I pretty much talk to myself. This is how I make content. Also, you're on number six, bozo. Uh, five? What was that? Hummer. Food. Tip number six. <laughs> Would you look at that? He figured it out. Portable charger. Super important for somebody in your group to have a portable charger. Now why? Your Horror Nights ticket, if you bought early, could be on your phone, whether it's by email or if it's in the Universal app. I think Universal app is the safest and the best, but also you should have a screenshot of it. Two, the map is gonna be on your phone and wait times are right there on the Universal app. So you should be checking for wait times, kind of scanning the area, trying to see what the next move could be. Three, you're also in line for some decent amount of time. So people play headbands, people play games, game pigeon, something, something to keep your brain occupied. The world we live in, people are on their phones. So somebody having a portable charger could be a lifesaver because this event takes place at night. Charge it before the event at 6.30, but a lot of people don't, including myself. I've made this mistake. So you come here with a battery at like 23% and it's dead by nine o'clock. And now you don't know the wait times, you don't have access to your ticket, you don't have Apple Pay, you don't have nothing. So bring a portable charger. Mine's a little bigger because I use it to charge my camera and my phone, but you can get these small ones. They have fuel rods, smaller ones. You can get them at Target for super cheap. Definitely good to have for at least the ninth link. I can't recommend it enough. Somebody in the group have a portable charger. Remember when I said it always rains? Yeah, look at those clouds. We gotta hurry this up. Ugh. Speaking of park map being on your phone, tip number seven. Look at the park map and make a plan beforehand. If you've never been to Universal Studios before, you definitely wanna look at this map. If you've been here, you might feel you know the park and that might be true, but Horror Nights changes the game a little bit because all these houses are backstage and there's a lot of lines that line up next to each other. There's different entrances and then you come out of different places. It's important to look at a map and have a plan because if you go in to it blind and you think you know it and then all of a sudden you're like, wait, which house is where, which direction? Wait, they close this off, there's a show over there. Wait, this scare zone's kind of crazy. It can get a little overwhelming. It's important to look at a map, have an idea of a plan of where you want to start. Now as the night goes, 
once you kind of get a feel of the park, you get yourself in there. If you want to start looking at wait times and make adjustments, jump to different houses as they drop low, make that call. But in the beginning, you should have a plan of where you want to start and the first couple houses you want to hit. As well as that, if you're coming to the event for one night, and there's certain houses you want to see. Obviously, there's a popular ones like Insidious, A Quiet Place, or Ghostbusters, or there's some popular original ones that people want to see, like Slaughter Cinema. Make sure those are our priority because you definitely want to hit those and make a plan of how you're going to hit those, whether that's early or later, um, to make sure you get the ones you for sure want to see. Ah, no, dude. I'm in trouble. Oh no! Oh my God, I'm so screwed. Moving on up to tip number eight, and that is to start in the back of the park. Now in the back of the park, we have the show, which is behind me, and four other houses. So my move this year will actually be to major suites right in the middle and then move my way to the back of the park, but also you could come to the right to the back of the park if you so choose, but start towards this back end here. All the IPs, A Quiet Place, Insidious, Ghostbusters, they're all at the front this year. So that means the back of the park isn't gonna be as busy as the front. So you should be able to get a lot done a lot quicker if you head right to the back and start this way. Um, plus, later in the night, when the shows start getting out, it does, and people start moving the way back here, it does get chaotic, there's not as much space to walk around. So it's easy to get in there before the crowds really push back here and get, knock out some of these houses. As for the show, I think Nightmare Fuel is a great show. I think you should definitely hit it. I would either hit the 9.30 or the 11 o'clock show. That's because the, this is when the house wait times are at peak time. Because most people who have came early are still here and people who came later in the evening are now here. So they're all waiting in line for houses. So if you're gonna hit the show, I recommend the 9.30 or the 11 o'clock. Get in line for the show 20 minutes beforehand, 15 minutes at the latest. That's still gonna get you a good seat and there is no real bad seats in the house. But those are the times you should be hitting it and then you can work your way towards the front as everybody is working their way back here. A lot of cool pop-up bars everywhere as per usual. A lot of drinks and this year they have premium cocktails back. So you can get just regular alcohol and make your drink as opposed to just the pre-mixed drinks. Great, and I love having a nice drink at the event. Tip number nine is to stay hydrated, okay? There is a lot of drinking here. There's nothing wrong. They definitely encourage some drinking. Um, you don't want to do it in excess, so obviously drink responsibly, but definitely stay hydrated. Uh, it gets hot out here. There's a lot of walking, so you definitely want to have the water intake, some Powerade maybe, something like that. But stay hydrated before the event and while you're at the event. Try to get yourself some water. Make sure you're taking care of yourself so that way you can last the whole night and not find yourself in the drunk tank or falling over or being a nitty. Okay, so stay hydrated and drink responsibly. All right, and the last and final tip, tip number 10, is to stay late. And by late, I mean 2 a.m. This event runs till 2 a.m., so take advantage. It used to close, I think, at 1 on Monday. Oh, man, I gotta hurry up. It used to close on Wednesdays and Thursdays, and I think Sundays at 1 o'clock, and only stay open on Fridays and Saturdays till 2. That's not the case anymore. It's open till 2. Look at these clouds. This is the scariest. Only stay late. You want to make sure you do that to get full advantage because from midnight to 2 a.m., but especially 1 a.m. to 2 a.m., the house lines are increasingly short. And at that point in time, you can't trust the wait times. There's been houses at 1.30, say 60 minutes, and I hop in line, and it's a 10-minute wait. So this is when you should definitely capitalize on those popular houses, Ghostbusters, Quiet Place, Insidious, Universal Monsters. Because one, everybody's already hit those. They made sure to hit those, so now they're doing the other houses in the park. Uh, so those lines have died down. Plus, there's just less people in the park, less people using Express, which is what holds up some of the lines sometimes. So 1 to 2 a.m., you can easily, and I've done it in the past, run through four houses, five houses, if they're close to each other. So definitely, 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 come early and stay late. If you want to take a break, rest, obviously you need to take restroom breaks, but if you need to take a food break, you want to just sit down for a little bit, explore the scare zones, do that again around the time of shows from 9 to 11, take your rest there. So later in the night, you can bang through a bunch of houses, but make sure you stay late. And just a few more bonus things at the end of this, okay? Horror Nights is a great time. Make sure you respect the scare actors. We don't touch scare actors. We don't curse at scare actors. If you get scared and you let out a little curse word, that's okay, it's funny, but we're not screaming at them. You respect the scare actors. You respect the workers who work the food, who work security. We wanna make sure we do that, okay? It's a chaotic event. We all know that thing you typically will see in the theme park. That doesn't mean get blackout drunk and it doesn't mean to be an ass. Respect the workers, respect the other people who paid to be here, okay? And on top of all of that, have a good time. I know this makes it seem like it's kind of chaotic, and it might be for your first time. And it's a fun chaos, it really is. But enjoy yourself. 
make that plan of what you want to do. Do what you want to do and don't sweat it. It's a good time. It's a fun event. It's not like anything else you'll be doing in any theme park. And it's only for two months, so it's very unique. And these houses, you probably will never see them again. I used to say never see them again, but bef now but now they're creating an all year hard nights in Vegas, so some of these popular ones might make their way over there, but you'll never be able to do them in this park again. And that's the cool thing about this event is it's two months and then it's gone. So make sure you have a good time, enjoy yourself, be responsible, and if you see me, say what's up. Love talking to you guys about Horror Nights, it's awesome. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already subscribed, there's gonna be a ton of Horror Nights content coming soon. I appreciate you, love you guys, and stay tuned for the question of the week. All right, look at me, just doing a little porch chilling right now. Just finished editing, needed a quick break. Two things, number one, uh, before we get to the question of the week, I wanted to say thank you to everybody who donated to my Back to the School Drive. Um, we were able to finally get all the stuff to the teachers. We ordered a bunch of Amazon uh, wish lists as well as there was an adopt the classroom thing online. Uh, that was really cool. So reaching out to those teachers, hearing their stories, um, sending them the supplies they need. We bought a bunch. Some of, like some of the teachers' wish list, we just bought their whole wish list. Um, so we were able to do that, which was really cool. As well as there was a family that I was put in touch with uh, who are doing a very awesome thing. And out of nowhere, they've had to pretty much sacrifice their lives right now to take on three kids. And they're doing that and, and they're being great role models and great parents to these kids. And they, um, it, that's an unbelievable thing. It was kind of, it's, it's unbelievable that they're doing it and they're great people. And we were able to give them a ton of money to support um, the kid going to school and support them and, and help them out as they're trying to take on this responsibility of, of three kids. So shout out to them, shout out to you guys for being great people and helping me help them out. Um, so it was awesome hearing some of those things, getting those thank yous. I really appreciate it, but the thank yous go to you guys as well for helping out the back to school drive. So thank you for that. Number two, the question from this week uh, comes from Ian, I believe it was on YouTube and he asked, um, outside of the theme parks, what's my favorite like Disney thing to do? Um, and this goes for Disney and Universal. My favorite thing is to explore their resorts. Disney has some really awesome resorts. Obviously, you guys know Wilderness Lodge. I want to do more videos there. I'm trying to get to some of these resorts and actually vlogging it. Some unbelievable resorts. And so does Universal. Uh, Universal really does too. All their resorts are really cool. Their pools are nice, hanging out around there. Grabbing a drink at the resort, chilling at a pool at a resort, um, just walking around some of these resorts. Um, they're really beautiful. So when it comes to like my favorite Disney slash Universal thing to do, that's not the theme park. Uh, it very clearly is chilling at the resorts because I love Springs and I love City Walk, but the resorts are typically more chill, uh, which is kind of when I'm not in a theme park sometimes. That's what I really want to just have as a nice chill day at a resort. So that's what I do. So that's what I like to do outside of the parks. Thank you, Ian, for your question. Great question. Appreciate you all for watching. Love yous. Use Horror Nights opening weekend is this weekend. So get ready for vlogs. We might get a video on Sunday. We might. See you then.